Um, I thought right, rather than it look like a sort of undergraduate sort of presentation that you'll come to the front and present your slides, I'll put the slide up, wave, <laughs> and then um, just maybe um, just sort of like focus on, uh, we just want to sort of hear more about the purpose, because you'll see the challenges are very similar. So just want to hear from you, sort of in one or two sentences really, just, just tell us a little bit, the purpose will be on the slide, but just maybe a little bit of background. It's so helpful with Hannah just to sort of understand a little bit more about the link from what you're doing now to sort of the, the, the challenges. So if, if you can do that in your, on your table, just give, just to give us a little background, which just, just for one minute really. And then we'll, we have time for one question for each accelerator. We've got, we've got 30 minutes for that slot. So we're gonna go around England, and we're gonna start in the northeast with Beverly, and we're gonna go around clock rise, if that's okay with everybody. So, um, oh, sorry, Beverly Road in Hull. <laughs> okay, so um, tell us a bit, well, what, what, what do you want to get out of the High Street Accelerator? What's... Sure, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so, my name is Ben Murphy, I'm uh, working in the major projects team at Holt. So, uh, yeah, we were really pleased to put forward uh, Beverly Road as our area. Um, I think we alarmed your team a bit recently initially in that it's a five kilometre stretch of road. <laughs> <so that's laughs> <actually good>. um, <laughs> we have a meeting about that and we rapidly sort of focused it in to be a bit more hyper local, I think it's a little used earlier. So, um, yeah, the challenges we got there, so just to speak a bit more about them. Um, so the area is quite sort of run down. It's a, a main sort of trading route into Holt from the north. Um, so it, it, it's um, developed as you know, a sequence of sort of individual places over time, which have amalgamated into this long sort of strip. Um, we, we, we've had investment in the past through the Council of Heritage Scheme into that area, but it was very much focused on heritage assets. Um, so we, we see a little complementarity with um, the funding that we can, and, and the activity we can drive in our um, high streets accelerator. Um, so, yeah, there, there are visual detractors within that really prominent route into the city, um, the trap sites, etc. Really underperforms uh, socioeconomically, so um, we were talking about um, lifespan earlier, so it really shocked me that in, in this area, specifically in Hull, people live 10 years younger than a male than the national average, so um, vacancy is, is quite high across the retail unit there, so it's around 9%. Um, but it's quite sustained as well, so where shops are empty, they're empty for a long period of time, which is sort of 24 months on average, I think. Um, and, and it's a real vibrant, sort of multicultural area, um, but we do have quite transient communities in there in terms of like, businesses who do come in and do that quickly, um, but also residents as well. Um, but there's less of a, a, a sort of um, a fixed community experience. And it says on your purpose, though, about building on the foundation. So, so you know, the Townscape Heritage thing, what sort of stakeholders have been involved in that already? And will they be sort of like coming into the High Street Accelerator partnership? That is the plan, yeah. So the plan is that's a foundation that we could build on. Um, I, I wasn't closely involved in that scheme, if I'm honest, but we're still sort of giving our way into those um, partnerships. But certainly we, we've got um, local stakeholders, civil societies, um, but there's more of a business angle here I think, than we have mm -hmm. with the heritage scheme. And we're really looking forward to engaging with businesses more um, and, and trying to engage with three holders as well, as well as um, people who are sort of occupying these businesses and a bit more transient. So trying to really keep in there. So I think there's a point that you made in, in Accrington. Obviously, when people put in their, their time and everything else, you know, they, they can sometimes feel a bit <laughs> undervalued if something else sets up. You think, well, hang on a minute, we've been doing this for ages. Why are we involved? But it's also an opportunity to sort of refresh and bring on board sort of stakeholders, like you say, businesses, if they, they haven't been so involved in some of those things. So thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, we'll move round to Grimsby. Grimsby? <laughs> next to <laughs> next <to> Hull. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm lucky I'm in the Retail Generation team. Um, colleagues here um, from um, Community Safety. So we've been sort of working together to bring um, designing our crime, basically, in the town centre. We were the same as everybody else, already what I've heard in the room is like, you know, yeah, recognise all of those things. So a huge amount of capital investment, um, but really struggling with um, place perception, particularly sort of around the town centre. Um, we've worked with the United States Task Force, had a, a really good um, session with those on through the unlocking your place potential that um, ended in January this year with a town centre event where basically the people in the room 
were told, you can't leave this to the council, you have to get yeah. involved yourselves. You know, it, it was that Steve doing that? <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> but they but they really did take that on board. Um, and we from there we developed a, a small group uh, called the 2025 group. So they secured some funding through our shared prosperity pot um, to um, to pay somebody basically to go after this because we find often that there are lots of people who are really keen to do things but they have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. So actually yeah. being able to physically uh, deliver these things is a challenge. So um, they have a 2025 champion that is funded until March 2025. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is, it's, um, they're, saying, they're going around all of the businesses, community groups, and saying, okay, you think it looks crap now, but by 2025, do you realize how fantastic this place will be? Um, we've had two events so far. The last one had, I think, 90 all people who work in the town centre across lots of different sectors um, are really, really positive. So we're going to be working with them to just widen that group a little bit, because that's just a group of four who are leading. Our original group was about 12 people, but we found that it was too big a group to actually get anything done. There were lots of, but what's in it for me, sort of in the, um, in the group. So we sort of hoped it down to four and then leading it. So, We'll be working with them. They would have liked to have been here today, but we're all businesses. Yeah. It's a very busy time. Oh, so, <laughs> so, but yeah, looking forward to, to moving on with that. Yeah, no, that's great. And again, very, very focused. And I think I made the point of, on, on your table. The challenges here are pretty pretty similar. We've, <laughs> we've put the slides up and you'll start to see that. But you're all taking a very place based approach because you, you, know, you know your places and you, your stakeholders. So, you know the work that's done already. And, how this policy can just sort of accelerate some of that. So, you know, it's, it's really, really interesting to, to hear these different sort of approaches and this very focus on quick, quick wins and perceptions. So moving round to Scunthorpe. Yeah. <laughs> just <Today>. you. <laughs> uh, well, we'll an investment and we really not to the council. Um, to pull up to our charity, Hang Street, uh, it's the largest of um, again, similar challenges with vacancy rates, just to expand upon that, um, we've got a very linear high street at 100 metres, um, we've got a stock of 350 low quality units um, and two shopping centres in front of the confined space as well. Um, I think it's, it's like a cycle of uh, deprivation a little bit in terms of more vacancy, less appetite from the users to come and visit the town centre. Um, we do have a two hours free car parking, but I think that slightly hinders us in some respect because we're looking for two hours and then leave, um, which we don't really have the world time, unfortunately, for all of the leisure uses. Um, Antisocial behaviour um, is our main area in some form in terms of theft, um, public order offences, but a lot of that I think is perception, mm -hmm. um, and that probably ties into the environmental quality in terms of not very welcoming, not very attractive. Um, but I have kind of put the imagery on there in terms of the positive that we must go to the Commission for the Two Delivery Public Realm Works um, off the high street for the main square. We've held seven events there since it's opened last year. I think a lot of it comes down to the aspirations of local businesses and people in terms of what they want to do through this consultation. It's mostly our more bins, our potholes, but it's not really great to be on the picture. So for us taking this forward, I think it's people to revisit the master plan we've got. Um, and can take them through the journey with us to understand mm. where we're at and mm. where we want to achieve. We do have a town still board, it's got 10 members, but we really do struggle with um, participation from businesses. Uh, so we're intrigued to know how you managed to do that with Prime Map Manager for the subgroup and to do that with Prime Map in the town centre. Um, but a lot of it is based on goodwill, I'd say, from the partnerships with the NHS, police, fire services. Um, so it's really tough. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, look, hopefully, even this afternoon, with the focus of the session sort of on, on, on partnership, but, but very much, I mean, we're delighted for, as a task force to be able to support you in a more hands, hands on way and actually come and visit and do some pra practical practical things. Is that 
part, partnerships aren't set in stone. They, they need they need evolving, you know, especially with like the, the challenges as well and what the focus needs to be. And that's, you know, some, sometimes you've got people together that are fantastic strategically, but you know, not <laughs> not going to do some of, some of those operational things. So it's interesting you're saying about the aspirational things there that people are more involved in the operational and and and, and you know you, they they need some support to, to sort of think about the, the, the sort of bigger sort of strategic, strategic pic picture. But if they care about the town and they're invested in the town, then I'm sure they'll be able to make that make that leap as well. So thank you very much. Let's move on to the next one, Stoke. <laughs> Morning, um, Mark Hall from uh, Scotland Community Council. Yes, we're looking at um, the Stoke Town. It's uh, quite a central city, it's a great life choice, but uh, we are going to um, invest in Stoke Pilgrims. And the thing behind marketing is that we're quite successful with funding funds. Uh, we've got two significant projects which are in close proximity to Stoke Town. Um, it's also a, a town that's benefited from um, um, investment. So that's going to be its final year now. So at that point, we made about the transition from that stable group into uh, a group focused more on, on the town centre as a whole. That's one group that we'll be taking uh, to bring other uh, stables on board. Um, the Spose site lies right adjacent to the town centre. Um, we're just master planning that at the moment. The key for that for all stakeholders is to ensure they benefit the, the town centre uh, slightly further away, which are uh, adjacent to mainline railway station again, new neighbourhood, um, which we can see that is served by, by the town, town centre. So, you know, from my, my aspiration is to pull some of those together. I think they've been a little bit siloed um, mm -hmm. in terms of their delivery today. So, it will be a case of um, getting a collective together to uh, empower those individuals to actually drive some change within the town centre itself and how those projects, as those investments come forward. Uh, actually influence the, the direction of the town. Um, uh, another positive is that we've got a lot of uh, creatives mm -hmm. um, both within the smoke factory business and within the town centre around there. Um, and we can tie those up with some of the latencies we've got as within the town centre. Again, that's the opportunity to see moving forward. Um, and finally, a comment on this, which is why they've got some place. Uh, we're sharing uh, desk space next to me at the moment. Um, and every really key well, we already have a workshop walk around the town looking at having a point that I think it's one of the small interventions mm -hmm. that's they really you know, they can make a whole lot of difference in terms of the environment and create a uh, huge amount of money to make significant, significant change in the town. They've already given some pointers. So I'm sure we'll, we'll have them as our uh, sounding boards moving forward. Yeah, I mean very, very strong cultural networks um in, in, in step across uh, across the, the, the whole um, of all the towns, and um, we, we've just completed a piece of research where we've been looking at how partnerships form, and, and when they form from sort of diff different sectors, and we've been looking at um, culturally sort of um, catalyzed place place partnerships, um, and, and it's in it, it's really interesting because creative people do do everything a little bit differently. And it, it's quite it's quite fascinating to see when they're driving a place partnership, and then you invite the other businesses, economic, but they 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 they've been the uh, catalyst for that. You know, they're, they're they're different types of partnerships, and they're very focused on the here and now, and they really can can change perceptions uh, quite quite quickly. So you've got some yeah, definitely some some key, I'm sure, enthusiastic stakeholders to, to work with there. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, Dover Court. A long way. Yes, yeah, so you get the price for the longest trip to the Absolutely. I think we broke the mold of being the, um, the only town in, in the south, so we're in Essex. But I've just um, offset that. I'm also a Man United fan living in the south of England, so I'm just offset that. <laughs> most of them do, so most of them do. Yeah, you're welcome, Dan. I'm not like that joke. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting that lots of similar kind of issues, and, and uh, there's lots of repeats here, but um, the Dover Court sits but up next to Harwich, which is the kind of uh, area that people kind of know, but Dover Court is almost the town centre of Harwich. Um, so massive heritage and history there. Uh, what strikes me looking at all these images is, is the buildings are all quite, quite stunning, and, um, and the actual shop fronts are tend to be in decline. Actually, when you kind of, kind of walk close up to a lot of the buildings, they're, they're you know, 
poorly managed in, in a poor state of repair. Some of them have trees growing growing out of them. So there's, there's a kind of lack of love and a lack of um, care and, and, and thought. A lot of landlords live, live, live away, not really that concerned with, with image and perception and the way that that looks. Um, fortunately, over the last few years, um, started to get a huge amount of investment. So um, Freeport East, um, uh, which, which is going to be based at, at Harwich Ports, or, or, or part of Freeport East at Harwich Ports, so massive investment, potentially massive transformation change there. Um, this stretch of road here um, is subject to a levelling up fund um, uh, project right way down that stretch of road, which is the King's Way up to where the station is up to the, the seafront there. Um, that, that there's going to be a big um, public realm scheme. So, and, and you can see that the public realm is poor. There's kind of lack of animation, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a, a little bit planned. But what strikes me about some of the things that I said today is really interesting about the, 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 uh, the simple things and the small things actually can make a huge difference. I totally agree with that. Uh, and, and actually, you, you get people who are socially isolated going and having their morning breakfast in, in an area which kind of it, it is a little sad at, at, at times. And that, that you know, that improved animation, more people, more energy can have a big impact on, on, on people's life as much as it can on the wider Yeah, economy. and interesting, you've actually put that sort of like capacity that we've been talking about as part of what, what, what it is you, know, you, what you want to achieve, you know, so some, some sort of like boots on the ground to go out and do some, some, some of that work. So. Thank you very much. So, moving to Hyde. Yeah, the back. Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, my name is Ben Goodger, uh, head, of head of investment development at uh, Tameside Capital. Um, similar to, to Stone Capital, there's probably quite a lot of repetition here in terms of some of the. Uh, similar <coughs> to Stone, uh, to Tameside, one of the, I think, one or two uh, GM authorities representing Stone. But similarly, a lot of sort of concentric towns um, and our growth and sort of generation programs. Largely focused around it. Uh, we have been uh, unfortunate and successful in the uh, last couple of years in, in, in securing some significant investment for those towns. And, and Hyde is, is, is very much our sort of priority for um, investment. It, it, it does need that investment both through um, sort of public sector supporting um, regeneration of the town, but also to sort of stimulate um, investment from uh, the private sector as well. Um, so, similar to some of the themes that have been talked about today. Um, as I said, it's, it's a, a, a fairly small, uh, sort of established uh, local town, a uh, former market town, um, but it does, it does suffer from the similar sorts of challenges to others. So we have that decline in retail really as people come to the town. There is that sort of prevalence of sort of big box retail in the town centre. There's a sort of image there, I think the sort of red outline is it's a, a fairly large sort of ageing uh, sort of retail centre, and we've been working with owners over, over various years to try and sort of improve and invest in that. But like I say, that, that sort of dominance of retail has seen, you know, like I say, a reduction in uh, sort of high quality retail moving out of the town. We've got a high sort of prevalence of vacancies and um, very similar to, to so around like I, I think I think we are sort of going to hear quite a lot of the same challenges. I just wondered if you've got yeah. a partnership already? Well, yeah, Is that so, I mean, looking yeah, at so, the so, so, Yeah, so from the point of view of, yeah, so again, very similar, sort of building on the high street task force work um, like I say, we, we have established uh, a, delivery, a delivery group of partnership. I've got representatives, thankfully, from the delivery group today. So we've got representatives from our community groups and, and our business community as well. Um, yes, yeah, so we've established that delivery group, and the focus over the last couple of years has, has been to sort of uh, position the town for, for investment. So we've uh, spent the last 12 to 18 months um, uh, developing a master plan for the town. That's going through our executive group process at the moment. Um, and we also used UKSBF to pick off and prioritise some of the recommendation at the High Street task, at the task Force, some of the quick wins at that massive plan process as well. So we've got um, a couple of little fires burning that we're hopefully going to continue to That'd maintain. Um, and this, this opportunity is, is exactly what is yeah. in the title, really. Yeah. It will be assist us in accelerating that and um, yeah. using it in the platform. So just, just say, who, who have you brought with you then? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, still in the park. Um, <laughs> my name is Mark Wiley. Um, I sit on the High Delivery Group uh, board. Um, also a local business owner, so not from local authority. Um, and also, um, some might suggest where I find the time, but it's clearly a priority. I'm also part of the community um, interest um, organisation that will, uh, that is um, looking to do probably tick off a number of things that. that um, um, the village uh, gathered together. Yeah, yeah. Right, we, we, we do, uh, 
Well, not too far for you to, to go and visit. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. mentioned before about the Hibbos trips. And yeah. Trips. <laughs> I think actually part of the collaboration is to go and see where there's best practice yeah. Yeah. And, and perhaps pick up where there is. So forgive me for asking this in the open forum, but can I have an invite to one of your boards? Because we would like to come see and kind of witness how that goes and, and, and how people interact. Not putting you on the spot. I know, but actually, you never mind, it maybe one of the separate. Yeah, there we go. And who, who else is with you? Uh, my name is Betty Abbott, I'm a local councillor and uh, town centre design community. Yeah. Also oh. chair of the GP Bankwood, so it would be good to set up the discussion. Yeah, brilliant. And I'm Julia Harrison, a retired local business owner. I'm chair of High Together CIC. Mm -hmm. We've been working very closely with the council, and uh, it's, it is amazing how much you can achieve when people are working together. We find it really helpful. Um, also, we were very glad to have Steve uh, <laughs> come along and give a presentation to anyone in the town centre that wanted to come. Yeah, you literally will we'll present to anyone in the town centre. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, that sparked an even stronger um, working practice mm -hmm. with the council and everybody because mm -hmm. we all realise what could be done when we all work together. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I, I was a sort of honorary member of Hyde. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even pay you to say any of that, so that's brilliant. Let's, let's move around to Oldham then. And again, um, maybe, so I think similar challenges. So if you can focus sort of more on what you want to get out of the, out of the High Street Accelerator. I have a double act because uh, I should introduce myself uh, and I'm, I'm on the line. Uh, so we're here for an uh, old council week call. So um, <laughs> it's been a really interesting journey for me because uh, Paul, my uh, director of economy, let me into the secret that they have this funding while I was working on it from the council. So I've sort of been peeped into this um, before I ever had to but I think. Um, it's almost like templates I can do just change the photographs and yeah. challenges and the same. Um, but I think what's been great for me is the last three weeks I've been hearing all the voices from the town. So you know that's that's been perfect for sort of mobilising um, the new team that we want to take forward to, to sort of influence it. So listening to the messages and the challenges from the people on the ground. But I think the only thing I want to add and I'll ask Paul to do all the various lots of funding because I'm still trying to get my head around this is I agree with the diversity of the board we really need to have that. I think I was really fortunate when I had NHS from the centre mm -hmm. and the other college and everybody else. And, and I'm so pleased that in all of all those people there are ready and wanting to get involved. But also spatially, so you know, it's very clear that when there's big construction regeneration going on, that we need to make sure that people are still part of that. But also when it's happening in one part of the town, we really, really need to make sure that the other voices the town I heard as well. Mm -hmm. So we're really fortunate that the Judy Street and Yorkshire Street, those are the areas that are not necessarily getting the typical regeneration in that might fall. So it's just that's which we'll put it out loud and place, right? Um, you know, they are some of our independent businesses, so they're not being part of the bigger regeneration. So it's really important that we don't end up with a two tier town as well, yeah. that so that yeah. we've got a spatial representation on board. So um, I'll pass to Paul to give you Maybe a headline figures, the capital and revenue. Yeah, just, 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 <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. That's that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you. 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 Yeah, they need to go over the issues. <laughs> yeah, so the facilities yeah. for use and high business rate at main high streets really suffered. So we are looking to pull together some of the active partnerships we've already got and um, build on some success we've had with that to bring them together specifically for this to look at reinventing the high street for culture and mm. leisure. Um, it's just a picture here from a young local artist um, that did a project with these people. And he's one of the, the people that went through that 
own college and university centre and decided he has got a family locally not to move away to the city where he could pursue arts, but um, we provided opportunities and paid work um, and spaces to do that and that's part of the National Festival of Making in Michigan. Yeah. So that's still yeah. not successful. And um, you all work together, do you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank, thank you very much for coming. Great, Harwood. Hi. I'm Steve Bradley from Hindberg Borough Council. Um, I'm currently heavily involved in the regeneration of Accrington Town Centre. So that's LUP, UKSPF, and the new Accrington LTPT. <laughs> so that's so I'll be on the board. Short of the, uh, I'm here with uh, Peter Holden, who's a local resident and a champion of Great Harwood. He's heavily involved in the uh, community action group and the civic society. So he's graciously accepted an invitation to chair a new board because the current board is really focused on the to town centre. We mm -hmm. didn't want to uh, feel that it, it, we were taking or, or giving Great Harwood just a bit of action. So we wanted to have a separate one. I think that would help. Yes, it's a different place, isn't it? Different place for lots of different people. So. Yeah. Peter's doing that, so we we will have to go down the process of creating a new board. But you've done it. What you've done it once. So you've so done that. Learning, yeah. we're still learning. So it's yeah. some, some yeah. good points that we can take forward. So what I've identified there is actually from a green point of view, because I think that's when we first heard about this fund. It was heavily focused on greening. Mm -hmm. And it'd be interesting today to see is that still the main focus, or actually we're hearing more. Problems that are around the town centres is it is it kind of just like the north. So Great Harwood is a very lean in high street, it's got a crowning jewel there on a, on a square verse. <coughs> pictures off that is, is probably the pictures that everyone sees is not the same issue. So but we've identified that it would be great to put some greening on it on, on this area. So for me challenging is is because it's Quite a strict time scale on this funding is identify public spaces that we can actually yeah. green rather than it's in private ownership. Uh, I'd like to see it as multi use areas rather than just a piece of grass that no one else wants to do. Yeah. With. Yeah. And also achieving agreement within the residents mm -hmm. of, of what we're going to do. I think it's, it's, it's always a challenge. You know, if you open it up to 50 people, they'll get 50 ideas and you know, we need it to come down to a smaller number yeah. and, and it's a simple purpose we want to get pride back into the township it is the, it is the second largest in Hamburg and it needs um, some sort of TLC I think down in High Street. So an interesting I mean obviously you are thinking about the delivery side of it but but a key part of this will be establishing that that partnership which you've got then for, for sort of the future for future for you know for, for future funding and other um, opportunities all right so Last but not least, Blackpool. <laughs> We're here at Park Arrington. I'm the head of planning and conservation within our uh, road places division. So we work alongside our more um, inward investment team. Um, basically, I think we've, we're in the process of setting our partnership up. We have all with us on our chair, Tim Allen, who we selected for a number of reasons, not least the fact that he's embedded in the local business community chairs. The Business group, but also is involved in another parallel project that we're looking at. Is this area actually is a part of our um, Be Who You Want to Be project, which is about our LGBTQ plus areas. So we've had a lot, this is the streets put up with night on the economy, but it's also mixed with residential. And this is something that you don't see very often ground for residential in these areas. So we have been at the task to try and get mm -hmm. on those residential partners with what we want to do or, or what they want to do, because this is all about getting people together decide what they want out of the changes we want to make. But effectively, uh, that project will, will run parallel to this and form part of it. Be and, and what's unusual here is we have a huge diversity of businesses there. They're all lights on the economy, mm -hmm. but they are very much hotel businesses, bars, clubs, and various other things. So we, this forms part of um, our ongoing town centre strategy. We are very lucky to have the High Street Task Force with us when we were doing that strategy. And uh, we had Diane and Matt um, working with us, and they both 
go to this in the formation of the advice strategy and then we did the strategy in the end. So we gave an awful lot of insight from that. And that's been able, well that's allowed us to weave in a lot more community led work. So recently we just had a huge successful project where we've been taking on creative communities as a help and appeal initiative and actually looked at ways in which we can get creatives onto the high street. We've done that successfully. But also what we've got to the market, not just putting them into empty shops or revolvers or retail space, but also creating permanent spaces for them that we can use. So we had to do something very similar there and drawing these different and often disparate part of this together. And we're hoping we can use a very similar model here, mm. working with the different businesses we already contacted. So we will basically, Tim will chair, we're still pointing to the other members of the partnership. We'll draw some from our, yeah. um, our bid, uh, some from our bid, some from our town centre strategy, because we've got a group that's actually implementing the strategy, of which you have the Orlando are actually on that group. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we are, what we want to get out of this is to be able to facilitate something very similar to what we do with our creative community, getting them to determine what they want their future to be, and being able to help resource that. Um, I was really interested to hear comments about what happens in the absence of funding. I think some of that's already happened yeah. to some degree on, in our area, but it's, there will always be those barriers you can't get over without resource. Resource doesn't always need money, and I think that's really what we're hoping to get out of this, the ability to resource the ability to get over the Yeah, to see the resources at a wider yeah. envelope. Capacity and, and so on. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Well, give yourselves a round of applause, everyone. Yeah. <laughs>